Okay, hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to one of our weekly, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as a bit wisdom cat. Words! They're failing me. Anyway, we're here to talk about episode 6, Resident of... Residents of Girls. Can you tell I'm a little... Uh, but before we get to the video proper, quick reminder if you haven't done so yet to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, set notifications to all, let all of AnyTube know that you are here. And without further ado, we're going to get into it. So, I have recorded this video three times, um, trying to find the right words. And every time, I feel like I'm either being, like, I I'm either, like, stumbling over my words or I'm, like, not making myself very clear. And here's the thing that I want to stress right off the top. I still and likely will continue to love this show <laughs> like this show is so good and i didn't want any of the criticisms i had to be construed as me being like really negative right because because i don't want that to be the case i love this show and i do think that this episode generally speaking is like solid it's just there's things about it that i'm like yikes right and like it's not it's really not where you think it is right like i've had some time i've sat down um called called my my partner and we've talked about like okay like here's what i'm thinking and they sort of like we're like okay here's what you do and so what i'm gonna do is we are gonna have a nice and tasty compliment sandwich that's what we're gonna do we're gonna have a compliment sandwich you and i and here's here's the thing right so in order to have this compliment sandwich uh i'm going to talk about the stuff i liked in the episode that was stuff like you know that i wasn't feeling and then we're gonna talk about stuff that i liked again so we're gonna talk about the difficult stuff that i think they did right the difficult to watch stuff i think they did not so right and then we're gonna talk about maha as a character so we're in, there's there's two good thing a good thing bad thing good thing right because there's more good in this episode than there is bad which is good so we're gonna talk about the good and we're gonna start by talking about some nasty stuff and i am gonna say before i begin this is your your warning. We're gonna be talking about some subject matter that is really troubling. We're gonna be talking about stuff that, let's just say, does not involve consent. Um, I can't really say the word on YouTube because I will get in trouble. Uh, but I, it, it does not involve consent, which you can assume. If you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm giving you a heads up, which Crunchyroll did not do. Even, like, no viewer discretion warning at all, even though this is likely going to be pretty troubling for some people. Um, but yet, for some reason, there's no viewer discretion warning on this, but there's a viewer discretion warning on High Guardian Spice. Just let that say, I really gotta do a video on High Guardian Spice, don't I? That train wreck. Anyway, uh, <laughs> losing track. So, yeah, there's really troubling stuff this week. Um, and it was really difficult to watch characters like Ifa and Noine sort of like deal with what was happening to them. Um, and I think on the surface that this is really good. I think that like the, the way it's handled is good because normally when it comes to I, I have to dance around this word, but scenes that involve a certain act that is in this episode is usually not handled very well. But the subject matter is like, this is bad, the people doing this are bad, and these girls deserve so much better than what's happening to them. And I'm glad that that is the message. I'm glad that we actually see the pain that Ifa and Noine and the other girls go through. Like, it's not glossed over. You see that shit, especially Noine. Oh my god. Um, the, the, yikes, that scene with the, sickle like uh, 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 um rough right like really really sad and hard it's hard to watch like this episode is hard to watch i did not have a good time uh i did not have a good time at all Th this episode is pain um mind you it's pain that you need because you need to understand where maha is coming from as a character so i will say that it, it's the way it's written well yes it's very dark it's in a similar vein to something like i would say it's still closer to like goblin slayer than than like i almost said re-zero goblin slayer than uh sword art online sword art online has a real prop i love sword art online too don't get me wrong but sword art online has a real issue with like i 
can't say the word. <laughs> blank guy. I'm gonna just say blank guy. <laughs> Blank guy is a problem, like, having the villain always be blank guy is a problem in SAO. It's still a problem here, because these characters show up, they're blank guys, who all they think about is blank and and selling the, the girls and blank them later after selling the, it, bleh. But, like, the characters at the center, like Maha, are, are good. And the pain that you see Aoife and Noine, I, I keep looking down because I have their names down there if you're wondering. Uh, Aoife and Noine that they go through, like, you see it, right? And it's, I will say, when I saw the title of the episode and I understood where we were going, I was like, oh no, because I remembered what the author wrote before. And I was nervous. But the narrative is strong. Like, the narrative through line of this shit is horrible, this is what these girls would go through, and it is traumatic, and you should feel bad that they're going through this. You barely know them, and you feel awful, right? You feel awful for them. I felt fucking pain, like, the whole episode, just like, no. And I will say, writing-wise, there's strong symbolism this week as well, right? There's really strong symbolism in the scars, right? The scars on Noine that she, again, sickle, you uh but when she uses the sickle it leaves scars on her face so she's not really picked as much for blank time as the other characters which is good and bad good because like she doesn't have to be blanked anymore but bad in the sense that she completely horrifically scarred her face and that sucks um and you feel really bad for noine and maha and ifa and all the other girls involved in this um, and it sucks and it's sad. And so when at the end, the blank guys are arrested, um, and the day is saved, when we see Noine again, her scars are gone. And that's very solid symbolism in the sense that, like, the scars have healed. Like, the scars from this traumatic event have healed and they're ready to move on. It's good symbolism. Now we're going to talk about the not so good stuff. It's good symbolism, but it's misguided. It's incredibly misguided. Um, it's the one, there's two writing moments, one that I think might be a translation error if I'm super honest, but there's two writing moments that I was like, that's a little misguided. Um, he, scars like this don't just heal like that, just because the guy went to jail. Um, ask any blank survivor, uh, that's not how that works it haunts you forever. So, like, it's the idea that it's just like that might actually be kind of offensive for some people. Like, because the symbolism is clearly like, the scars are healed, everything's fine. And for some people that might be really kind of not cool, right? Because they might see it as like, that's not great, right? Like, that's that message isn't super good. It, like, for me, what I would have done is not scarred Noine in the first place, but if you're going to, then have the scars begin to heal, right? Like, they're not fully gone, but, like, the magic works so that they're faint, right? But they're still there to show that, like, the pain that these girls went through will always be with them, but they are capable of moving on and living very happy lives in spite of what happened to them. That would have been a bit better, in my opinion. And the friggin' line that I cannot believe was in this episode was when, first of all, this, this is my boy saying this, which I think is what bothers me. <laughs> and it, it kind of makes me think that I don't feel like the writer would put this line in here intentionally. Um, and it's, you know, you look better. You'd look better if you smiled. What? <laughs> like, when I saw that line, I'm like, okay, he doesn't know the context, but we do. And hearing you'd look better if you smiled is the equivalent of hearing, like, you'd look better if you smiled more from some fuckboy at a bar. Like, ah! Like, that that line is a meme in the West. So, like, especially, like, amongst, like, like bars and nightclubs and, and just douchey frat boy nonsense, you always hear the, like, oh, you'd look better if you smiled more. It's like, ew! And hearing it come from Lug, I was like, no! <laughs> Like, no, he didn't just say that. I know that he didn't mean it like that. But, like, no. <laughs> like, that made me, like, no. Um, and also, um, okay. 
How do I address this? So there's moments during the scenes where the girls are about to be blanked where uh, the camera lingers, you know? The camera sort of like, ooh, like it zooms in. I'm like, time and friggin' place, my guy. Time and friggin' place. You guys know me. I have said before, when it comes to fan service, I am not a prude, okay? I like Keijo and it's one of my favorite shows. Right? I like free, and it's my favorite show, right? Man service, fan service, I like it all. But the, the, the thing that those shows do right, time and place. This is not the time nor the place for lingering opi and booty shots, okay? Like, don't need that. Don't need to see the girls, like, drenched in white dresses so that you can see, like, mostly through it. And it's, like, attaching to the... Don't need it! Really weird show! Really, really weird. And the thing that I think, and this is the thing that I want to stress. This, the writing felt like that was so out of place. And I almost wonder, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not a light novel guy, but correct me if I'm wrong. I got 10 bucks that says in light novel, this was not meant to be anything like that. That this shit was meant to be solely horrific because narrative wise, it is solely horrific. The things that happen here are not remotely supposed to be titillating these scenes are not i don't think that these are like meant to be titillating but they have those moments where it makes me go like ew like it just sort of like throws me out where i'm like why are you doing that why are you lingering that's not necessary dog like it's just weird not necessary um and i think that that's a studio thing i know that it's the same author as redo of healer i know this but redo of healer was a cash grab to get their name out there right so I don't think that the things that the, the the way they wrote Redo of Healer tells me that they actually probably hate that shit. And the way that they wrote this made me go like, oh, they get it. They don't like super understand, but they know that Redo of Healer was probably not great. You know what I mean? Like in terms of its subject matter, this showed me that I'm like, okay, so this author understands the gravity of what's happened, right? Like the, the gravity of what has happened to these girls, they get it, right? So I have to give them credit. Because it's, it's hand, like, the narrative is handled well. So what's up with these, like, random opi shots and stuff like that? Must be the studio, right? So that that's my line of thought, is, like, this must be the studio trying to be like, well, we gotta throw some etchy scenes in there. And it's like, you don't. You really don't. It's really weird. It's not the time or the place to be being like, oh, the, these character designs are kind of hot, though. It's like, not, not the time or the place. It's supposed to be pretty dark and serious right now. So... Yeah, that's the stuff that I didn't like. However, there is more that I liked. Um, there is more to like about this episode. And in particular, there's probably my new favorite character. And that's Maha. Um, Maha is an amazing character. And design-wise, if I might do a design time, if I might segue out of that dark subject matter into a design time, Maha's character is a super sick design. I love the blue hair. I love the purple eyes, the, the the two star pins. I will say, actually, now that I think about it, the star pins, she keeps them the entire time. I almost wonder if, like, those dudes would have, like, just taken her pins away from her and, like, sold them or something. But, like, who are they going to sell them to? Nah. Um, but I will say, like, again, in terms of design time, right, if we're going to analyze her design, um, the, she gets a, a bunch of different outfits so it's hard to pin down clothes wise like what her design is trying to say so really you get like the face right like so you just sort of get like like her yeah we're all we can really analyze is just like her hair her eyes and her accessories right so if i'm looking at her hair blue hair uh blue hair is usually meant to indicate a sort of co uh cool and collected type character right and we see that at the beginning like maha is definitely a cool and collected type of character uh, we get like the uh, the purple eyes are sort of purple as we know indicative of mystery royalty although I don't think royalty has anything to do with Maha's character so this is more of a um, this, this is much more of a sort of uh, uh, sort of mis mysterious vibe right because again purple does indicate royalty but royalty also indicates mystery so purple's often associated with mystery but also wisdom because you know mysterious and wise right like, Purple is often associated with both of those things, as the royals were deemed as being sort of wise back in the day, right? So pur uh, purple is very indicative of a, mis uh, of a mysterious wisdom. And I do think there's a lot of mysterious wisdom to Maha as a character. There's things that she knows, especially at her age at the beginning of the episode, that she shouldn't know. 
but new because of her merchant dad, right? And she has this really, like, calm and cool collected nature at the beginning of the episode that she tries to maintain and mostly does up until the very tail end for most of the episode. Very cool and collected character, hence the blue hair. The yellow uh, star, star hairpins sort of indicate that she's optimistic, right? Yellow is a very optimistic, upbeat color, and it also makes her a bit of a dreamer with her head in the clouds, right? What's above the clouds? The stars. So the two hairpins definitely indicate this optimistic, maybe slightly a bit of a dreamer type of vibe. And that's who she is. She is optimistic, a bit of a dreamer. She's wise, but also calm and, and cool, right? Like that's, you get all of that from her design. It's a stellar design. Like Maha's design is absolutely fantastic. And on top of that, Maha's a freaking great character. I loved seeing that she's this like daughter of a merchant and she has this like keen sense for business and her and her friends are like running around doing this sort of like, like tourist trap thing. Clever, so, so clever. Like I was like, that is such a cool idea. Like that is so clever. I thought that was gonna be the whole episode and I was super hyped. Like I thought the whole episode was gonna be about this little merchant business and Lug is gonna bump into them and he's gonna learn about how to be like sort of like savvy and street smart from Maha. Like that would have been really exciting. I would have liked that. Like I would have thought, I thought the whole episode was gonna be that like Maha was gonna teach Lug how to be savvy uh, and uh, like teach, her, teach him how to be a bit of a merchant while also teaching him like street smarts and how street smarts can sort of like help a merchant grow, right? And how, the, how to play to the sort of like tourists and stuff like that. I thought that's what was gonna happen. We then took a, a, a turn right into Blanky Town, which again was written mostly well, but just was totally not what I thought was going to happen. Um, but also, I should say, like, during all of this, Maha remained a strong leader type, right? Like, she, she tried her best to keep everyone together. She's strong, but she's not invincible. And that is a good point, right? Like, I feel like an issue with a lot of, like, main characters in uh, Isekai and just anime in general is they're always, like, invincible, right? They got, like, MC god powers, right? But a lot of the side characters are allowed to feel a lot more realistic because they're strong, but not invincible. And Maha's the same way. She's a really decent like leader, right? She's good at keeping these kids together. She does her best to try to help everybody. And she's strong. Like we see that, right? Like she has mana, like she is strong. She can knock back people back, right? But she's not invincible. This doesn't like make her like some crazy mage or anything like that. She's still just Maha. And I like that how they handled that she's strong and confident but she's not completely invincible she has a good sense of business but that doesn't mean she's super smart right like they made maha a really interesting character and besides luke she is the one that i'm the most interested in like i think she is so interesting and so compelling and i want to learn more about her i think they did a really good job so compliment sandwich there's a lot of things they did right some stuff that they did not so great and one thing they did exceptionally well and so in general, good episode, right? I think we can agree it was a good episode. I don't think anybody is gonna hopefully be mad, uh, but if you are really upset with this episode and you didn't like it and it made you really uncomfortable, you know what, I get it. And I'm really sorry that that happened, um, but hopefully you don't hold this against the show. I don't feel like this is something that should be held against the show unless it continues and it gets worse. Because again, I think the writing for this scene, it's hard is in the right place. And I think the author's heart is in the right place. I don't, whether or not you can forgive them for redo of healer, that's up to you. But um, I think that this shows me that like they are aware of the effects of what this is. Like this to me was almost a, a like an answer to like a lot of the people saying redo of healer is this awful thing. I feel like the, the author is like, I know I wrote it for money, right? Like it, it's, it's not good. Like I don't think they stand by redo of healer. I think they stand by world's finest assassin. And I think this is their finest work, if I might make a pun. But yeah, it's it's a rough episode. If people didn't enjoy it, I completely understand. Um, I did find more good than bad in this episode, and I hope you guys did too. But with that said, outro. And that's gonna do it for another video for this week, everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to boop that up snoot, share if you care, leave a comment down below. And of course, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell and set notifications to all. Let all of AnnieTube know that you are here. 
And before we go, as always, I have to give a big, big thank you to my wonderful masters who help keep this channel afloat. And of course, I have to give a special thank you to the masters of masters. And they are Izevi, Asaki VT, Elizabeth Just Elizabeth, Jcran23, Jeremy P, Matt87 Eagle, Shadow Creative, Shiorin, Stephen G, Stevie W, Trapmaster, Trevor W, and Tristan G. Thank you all so much for your continued support. It means the world to me, and if you too would like to see your name scrolling past the screen, or maybe have your voice shouted out at the end of these videos, be sure to check out that link in the description to our Patreon page, or you can hit the join button right beside the sub button. Either way helps out tremendously, and I thank you a lot for it. And yeah, that's it for me. So until next time, make sure you clean your room. It's filthy. Seriously, a clean room is a clean mind. Just think about it, okay? Anyway, bye.